Hey, good to see you guys. I am busily trying to add the rest of our people here via Zoom. And we will get started here in just a minute. And uh, try to include as many people as possible in our time here together tonight. Thank you so much for joining us at, uh, as we try this for the very first time. We had some difficulty with doing Facebook Live uh, Sunday. Some who tried to get on were unable to do so. So please let me know if you are having any difficulty tonight. So I have just sent the uh, email out to our uh, participants that are going to join us by Zoom. So hopefully I will have some uh, faces here on my computer screen in just a little bit, uh, but uh, glad to see the rest of you that are joining. Um, I, if you see my eyes going back and forth here, it's because um, I'm looking at my computer, going to be looking up at you guys on the phone in front of me, my notes, my Bible. It's a busy desk here tonight, but uh, trying to take advantage of as many resources we, as we possibly can to be able to uh, uh, give hope to people. Uh, as you are well aware, these are interesting days. But uh, God is in control. He's got this. And uh, we know that He's going to take care of it. And we will be uh, looking at some scripture passages here in just a little bit. We're going to pray together. And I've got somebody joining me right now. Hello, Miss Kimberly. Let's see, I guess she can't hear me yet, but uh, we will get in there in just a second and be able to do that. Hope you guys have had a great day. Um, I know that uh, if where you are is like where we are right now, um, it uh, life is interesting. Hey guys, I see some faces there. Got lots of people joining us on Facebook as well. Got people from all over the place joining us and such. So we're going to have a full crew tonight. Was it easier this time than the last time? Yes. Great. Great. Very good. Hello. Good to hear. Hey. Hi. How you do? All right. So we've got three of us here. I don't know how many people we got here. I just keep seeing the screen get more and more full with names and such. And uh, so we'll wait for some other people to join us via here. Kimberly, can you hear me yet? Hey. Yeah, I hear you. All right, great. We got Clyde and Trudy connecting up. Wow, we're going to have a full house here tonight. That is awesome. Let me uh, remind the people that are joining us via Zoom that we have a very limited time frame because we're still on the free plan. We might change that as we see how things go tonight and uh, see if we need to move over to the pay plan that gives us as much time as we need. And then I can invite people ahead of time and we can get that running ahead of time and be able to use our time more effectively. And my beautiful wife just joined us via Facebook instead of Zoom. Hey, Kimberly, now I see you. All right. Good to, good to see you there. Hello. All right. Awesome. Hello from Longland. It is cool to watch all these people joining in with us tonight. This is an awesome thing. I'm a little bit nervous, to be quite honest, because we've uh, never tried this before. And uh, imagine if we had all these people sitting out there in our fellowship hall this evening. And who knows what the Lord is going to use to, to uh, accomplish uh, through His church over the course of the time frame uh, of our separation. We might come together in a big old, uh, not have room to put everybody in. Um, at that point and such. All right, so I see I've got several that are joining us via Facebook that would have been joining us this way. That must mean that some people are having some difficulty there. Hey, Jason, I see your name there. I haven't seen your face yet, but I see your name. It's good to see you there. Uh, it looks like Jeff and Terry are here as well. Let's see if I can see some other faces there. 
All right. Now, for uh, there, uh, so Tammy's on here both via this and this. I'll tell you what, she's pretty talented. She is my wife, but you know, <laughs> that's a pretty awesome thing. Hey, guys. All right. Beautiful lady my wife is. Now the whole world knows that. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm seeing some that aren't able to get on by Zoom, but they're joining us via Facebook and such. So let's go ahead and get started here tonight. For those of you that are here via Facebook, I mean via Zoom, um, just to let you know, you don't have to have on your video if you don't want to. If you're in comfy clothes, then uh, you can just uh, participate via voice and such and everything else like that. But uh, let's all say a good hello to get one night. Even you guys that are there at home and uh, can't voice it and everything. Let's say all good hello one uh, together on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Hello! And that hello went all over to all over the place. Now, particularly for those of you that are on Zoom with us. Hey, beautiful. I can see your face now. That's my wife. Uh, just to make sure you do. That was the, that's the beautiful I was talking to. Um, but uh, although so there's some other beautiful ladies here with us as well. So, but anyway. Um... Just to uh, let you know, if you're on Zoom with us, since we can hear you, if you could turn off any TV or radio or anything else like that, uh, in order that we might not have that uh, extra uh, background noise and uh, do that. So here we are, we're meeting from all over the place together tonight, and this is an awesome thing. God's presence is here among us, I know that, even though we are separated from each other. And for those of you that are nearby but don't have a church home right now, um, when we are able to get physically meet together again, uh, we'd love to see you guys uh, check us out in physical presence and be able to enjoy one of company in that kind of way and celebrate together. Uh, Zoom only, as I said, gives us a very limited amount of time frame to get together. So we're going to go ahead and get started here tonight. And guys, if our Zoom time runs out, I don't get any warning on that. So it'll just go blank. So if you want to switch over to uh, Facebook at that point, and uh, we can finish things up or do whatever it is we can do at that point. But let's go ahead and pray together, and uh, then we will uh, jump right into our Bible study here tonight. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you right now, and we thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to get together tonight. I'm excited, Father. I'm excited by all the, the faces and the names that I've seen, some of them, some of the names from my past that uh, are very, very important people to me. And uh, some people back down in Georgia have joined us, and that's an awesome thing as well. Uh, it, it's just great, Father, to be able to be together here tonight. And I pray that you will guide our time. May we use it well, and may we be pleasing to you in all things. And I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, we are here tonight. Um, hey, Brandy. Hey, Jason. Good to see your faces now. Awesome. Good to see you. Um, but we are in, at Danville Community Baptist Church. At least I am, anyway. Uh, I'm the only one that's here. Uh, just to let you know, I did check with the state police today to make sure that it was okay for uh, me to be able to get out today. Uh, thumbs up, I see there, Jason. And they said, as long as... Uh, we are under number 10. One is less than 10, I checked. And uh, we should be in good shape. And you know what? Believe it or not, I consider this an essential activity. Because what we want to do here tonight is we want to give hope. I tell you what, if you have food in your belly and you have money in your bank account, but you don't have hope, what good is that? And we want to give some hope tonight. Uh, let me, for those of you that haven't been with us as we've been doing our Bible studies on Wednesday nights, let me just give you a quick review of some of the things that we've been dealing with. We've been talking about the Lord's Prayer. Most of you know it. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts even as we forgive the, our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, we haven't gotten very far. We've been working on this thing for six months and just pulling it apart piece by piece and seeing what it is that God wants to say to us in the process of all of this. So let me give you a little bit of review for those of you that haven't been here or even for the rest of us that haven't been here in a while. Our Father heart in heaven. 
we talked about what it means for God to be our Father. You know what? I mean, in the midst of everything that we've been going through the last couple of weeks and everything, the last few weeks and such, it means a lot more for God to be our Father. The one who, when you look at their face in the midst of the storm, they've got that calm look on their face and they can just calm your fears, wrap you in, your, in their arms. And you know what? Even though we can't wrap each other in our arms together right now, at least not unless it's family and such, God can still wrap us in his arms. He can still love on us. And he did, even though we were sick, sick with sin. And God in his holiness still reached down to love on us and to hug us, even though we contaminated him. Our Father, who art in heaven, came down to earth. Then we looked at, hallowed be thy name. God's name is to be lifted up. God's name is to be treated as holy. God's name is to be honored. And we looked at some of God's names. One of them was El Shaddai, God Almighty. The God who is strong enough to see you through whatever it is you're facing right now. The God who is strong enough to, to, to end COVID-19 tonight. The God who is strong enough to provide for his people. El Roy, that was one that you might not be familiar with. That's the one that Hagar used when, when she was running away from uh, Abraham and Sarah and she thought she was about to die and she just sat down and cried and God said, I'll take care of you, I'll provide for you. And she, she said that God is the God who sees. El Roy, the God who sees. Does God see your need right now? The God, does God see what it is that you're going through when, ever, when anybody else can't? We looked at Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. There was Abraham on the, top of, on the top of the mountain and he was about to sacrifice his son based on the commandment of God. And right at the last moment, right when Abraham was about to plunge that knife into his son's chest, God said, no, no, stop, Abraham, stop. And he looked up and there was a ram caught in the thicket. And Abraham said, God is the God who provides, Jehovah Jireh. We looked at Jehovah Shalom, God who is our peace. Do you need peace right now? God can give you that peace even when things aren't going so well. Then we began a long journey through thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And in the midst of that, we asked the question, what does it mean to, to do God's will the same way on earth as is done in heaven. Just think about how, how do the angels do God's will? They do it immediately. They do it without question. They do it uh, even to a certain extent enthusiastically. Uh, they do it without question. Um, they do it even when it doesn't make any sense to them. They obey God in those terms. Tonight we come to the future aspect of God's kingdom. And the first passage that we're going to look at is Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to look at verses 24 through 28. Now, if you've not been here to our Bible study before, usually I have a long agenda of verses that we're going to look at. And those of, the, of you that have been with me know that uh, <laughs> we often don't get very far because we find more meat in those passages than maybe even I anticipated. And, uh, and being able to see that and being able to Join in with that. I got to stop here for just a second. I just saw that my daughter joined us via Facebook Live, so I got to I got to wave with my daughter. Is that okay? Um, but uh, but her being with us is a special treat as well. So the first passage we're going to take a look at tonight is Matthew sixteen twenty four to twenty eight. We might get further than this. We'll see. But it says this. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Well, we're in times of saving and losing life, aren't we? There's a friend of mine. I haven't seen his face in a long time. Chris, hey, good to see you, my friend. You too. Sir. Awesome to be. I got it. Wait. 
Ah, uh, we're good. We're good. We're in Matthew 16, starting verse 24. Um, but losing life, saving life. It, you know what? I, I, I saw on a news feed today of people that are starting to be violent against each other. Uh, violent over water. Violent over... I, I saw a news feed today of somebody that shot on another person because that other person didn't cover their mouth when they coughed. These, these, are, these, are, these are tough times, okay? And we may not... We're going to do everything we can to keep ourselves safe, wash our hands, practice social distancing. That's why I'm the only one here at church tonight. Uh, but there's only so much that we can do to prevent this thing from, from attacking us and such. But when we're willing to lay down, lay down our lives for Jesus Christ, whoever loses his life will save it. It's not the person that's trying to protect themselves at the harm of somebody else or the cost of somebody else that is the one that rescues themselves. It's the person that is willing to serve others in this time as well as any other time. He goes on and says this, For what is a man profited if he gain, if shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? <laughs> Somebody right now might be willing to give toilet paper for their soul. That's a poor exchange. That is not a good trade, people. Okay? If you, and my wife couldn't help but laugh at that one. You can't hear her laugh, those of you that are on Facebook. But I can hear her laugh. I'll pay for that one later, I promise you. But, so people are, people are, people are weird, okay? They're just weird. What they value during a time like this. People are willing to give so much for instead of their soul. Can I say to you right now, if you've got all the food that you need, you've got all the money that you need, you've got all the toilet paper that you need, but you don't have Jesus as your Savior, then it doesn't matter whether you pass through this crisis or not because there's another crisis that's eventually going to come for you that you will not survive if you don't have Jesus as your Savior. Make sure of that. He goes on, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste the death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Jesus prophesied to some of the people, some of the disciples that were standing there, that they were going to get to see Jesus in his kingdom. And it goes on in that passage there, the next chapter talks about what Jesus was dealing with. Because it was just six days later that Jesus took three of his disciples up onto a mountain. And when they got up on top of that mountain, Jesus was transfigured before them. And two men, stood beside Jesus, two men of the Old Testament past, two important men, Moses and Elijah. And I don't know how you would have responded if you'd been on that mountain with Jesus and Moses and Elijah, but I know how, how Peter responded. He, he, he looked at those two other men and he looked at Jesus and he, he, somehow he knew this meeting was about to come to an end and he really didn't want to. You, you ever been in a worship service like that where you just plain did not want it to come to an end? I've been in some like that. And so Peter spoke up. In fact, he says he didn't even really know what to say. Probably would have been a better idea if he just kept his big mouth shut. Uh, but he said, hey, Jesus, how about if we build, build some booths, some tents for everybody here to be able to just hang around and let, let's, let's keep this thing going for a while. I think, I think that Peter had kind of gotten the idea, hey, I like hearing from these other two guys as well. And the Bible says that as that event was going on, there was a cloud that came down and encircled them. And out of that cloud, the father spoke and he said this, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. I've mentioned multiple times to my church and other people that I've had the opportunity to, to uh, teach in the past that I wish that there was an opportunity to be able to go back and record um, audibly the words of Jesus. 
because I, I wish that I could hear the inflection in people's voices, and particularly in Jesus' voice, as he said these things to the disciples and other people. So I don't have an audio recording, but based on what happened there and based on what happened afterward, I let me use a little bit of a license here and give you the possibility of how the Father said those words. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. I can't guarantee that's the way that it was said, but I kind of think that it was. Because Peter and James and John, maybe they were paying a little bit too much attention to Moses and Elijah because they were the new guys. They'd heard Jesus a lot. But now here's Moses and Elijah, and they wanted to hear them. It, it, was, a, it was a miracle. It was something they'd never experienced before. Maybe they're getting a little bit too enraptured. Three voices and they wanted to hear Moses and Elijah. Maybe, I don't think they would have said this. It'd be kind of bad, but maybe they might have said, Jesus, uh, I want to hear those guys. I've heard you a lot. And the father says, uh-uh. You need to listen to my son. Right now, you have so many voices that are talking to you. Uh, you've got news feeds that are that are providing you with uh, all kinds of stuff all day long. You've got advice that's coming to you from every corner, sometimes conflicting advice. It can, you've got that own inner voice that's talking to you. You've got people that, that are saying, well, if you do this, then you will avoid the virus, or if you take this, then it will give you protection from it, or it will heal you of it. It's hard to know who to listen to. I can tell you who to listen to. Hear him. And when your own voice says to you to be afraid, that's one time you don't listen to your heart. Listen to your father. Because he says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. You're mine. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Trust him. Trust him in the middle of the situation that you're facing. We're talking about God's kingdom here. Is God in charge? Is this his kingdom? Yes, it is. Listen to him. Let's look at another verse. This was in Luke chapter 17. We won't spend as much time here, I don't think. Luke chapter 17. And we're going to look at verses 20 and 21. God's kingdom is what we're dealing with here. And in Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, it says this. And when he, Jesus, was demanded of the Pharisees, the Pharisees come to him and they're, at, and they're asking him a question, whether or not they're demanding something of him, and he says, they say, when the kingdom of God should come. They want to know, when is your kingdom coming? Uh, I know that as we uh, see all the events that are going on in our world right now, uh, if you are familiar with your Bible, and if you've read the end of the story, uh, if you've read the book of Revelation and know anything about those end times, you know that there are some days that are coming uh, in which it talks about earthquakes and famines and pestilence um, and some things that sound very, very familiar to what is going on right now. Now, we're not in the in, uh, in that seven-year period the Bible calls it tribulation yet. There are some things that, that uh, give evidence of when that event actually begins to happen, but there are some precursors to those things. Are we, you know, at the point where that's what's around the corner? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the Lord is coming back. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. The Bible is very clear about that. Jesus prophesied it. That is coming. Is it coming within the next six months? Is it coming within the next year, the next 10 years, the next 100 years? I do not know. And I don't make those kind of predictions. But I'll tell you this, it's coming. And it's one day closer today than it was yesterday. 
And you better be prepared. You better be ready. Do I think that that this is leading toward that? Yeah, I mean, it's coming. And if nothing else, this is a warning to us. Imagine what was going to happen if the world is reacting to this way to the virus that has hit us. Can you imagine what they're going to act like when the rapture takes out millions of people instantaneously? What's going to be the thing that the stores run out of quick as then? <laughs> uh, I don't know. But the kingdom's coming. But you know what Jesus says in this passage? When they ask him, hey, is the time, when is the time of your kingdom? Jesus says this, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. He says in verse 21, neither shall they say lo here and lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. There is a coming kingdom. Jesus Christ is one day going to rule and reign on planet Earth. People will physically see him. His throne will be in Jerusalem. He's going to physically reign on this earth for a thousand years. And then after that thousand years, new heavens, new earth, Jesus' kingdom will be on this planet. We will rule and reign with him. That's all coming. That is a guarantee. But there's another part of his kingdom that you get to determine whether or not it is going to be, how shall we say, actualized in your life. Jesus is going to be on his throne. But the question is, the question that you have to answer for yourself, is Jesus on the throne in your heart right now? Jesus wasn't saying that there's a future king, that there's not a future physical kingdom coming. He was saying that in your life right now, you have to decide for yourself of whether Jesus is going to rule in your heart. When Jesus rules in your heart, fear can't. Only one person, only one entity can be king. Either fear is going to rule you, or Jesus is going to rule you. The kingdom of God can be in your life right now. The kingdom of God means that, that as far as that perspective anyway, means that you obey God in the midst of the environment that you're in right now. It's easier, granted, it's easier to obey God when life is easy. But this is when we get when our faith gets tested. Do we really believe what we say we believe. Do we really trust God when we get laid off? I don't have little ones in my house anymore, uh, but for those of you that do, uh, this can be both, both a wonderful time and a trying time at the same time. Can God give you the grace to be able to handle that? Can he give you the strength to be patient and kind and gentle, even when you don't feel like being patient and jaunt and kind and gentle. Some of you have a lot more time on your hands now. Uh, I know the temptation is to, to use that to uh, surf through the channels. Uh, a lot of different programs are making themselves free of charge available uh, to us now. Let me warn you, be careful. When you get bored, sometimes you might put on some things that you might not normally uh, put on as far as TV shows, movies, um, different types of entertainment and such. Be careful. Let Jesus Christ rule in your heart and be your guide for what it is you listen to, what it is you watch. Let him also give you the patience that you need to be able to deal with your loved ones at this time. I've heard that the the number of people calling divorce lawyers has dramatically skyrocketed during this time. Apparently, some people have discovered that they can't live with each other that in, in, in these times where they're, they're together so much. You hear about it? God can give you the grace to be able to do that. He can give you the strength to be able to handle these pressures. Let's look at another passage here. Turning over just one chapter in Luke chapter 18, verses 28 through 30. 
it says this. And it says, then Peter said, Lo, speaking to Jesus, he says, We have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, and in the world to come, life everlasting. You know what you're doing right now? You're investing. You're investing for the kingdom. Times are going to get difficult financially for a lot of people. I know there are some people who are financially stable enough to be able to ride this thing out without a dent in their pocket. Most of the people that I'm talking to right now are not in that category. I understand that. I know that. Um, but Jesus talked about where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We right now, through the, the actions that we do, store up resources that are waiting for us in eternity. Guess what cannot happen to those resources? They cannot diminish. They cannot go away. No stock market crash. No job loss. No bankruptcy. No health issues. No medical debts. None of those things can steal those, those resources from us. He says, store up for yourselves in, treasures in heaven where moth can't destroy, where rust can't destroy, where thieves can't come in and steal. Store up resources for yourself in heaven. Peter was saying to Jesus, Lord, there are some people that have walked away because they thought the cost was too high. What about us? We've left so much for you. And Jesus said, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. There's a song that you said that. Don't worry. I'm not going to sing it for you. I'm not that stupid. But it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. It will be worth it all when we see Christ. I want to look at another passage. Matthew chapter 26. This coming Sunday at our church was supposed to be, um, and in Matthew chapter 26, we're going to look at verse 29. Um, this coming Sunday was supposed to be Communion Sunday at our church. And uh, the passage here that we're going to look at in just a second was where Jesus took the Passover and used it to institute the Lord's Supper or Communion, where we partake of, uh, they partook of the wine and the bread, we partake of the grape juice and the bread, depending upon uh, your uh, denomination and your, uh, your practice at your churches and such. And I've been trying to figure out how in the world we can do Communion online. Uh, we'll work on that. We'll figure that out. Or, or maybe we'll wait till we can actually get back together to celebrate in that way. I haven't quite thought that through completely. But Jesus kind of gives us some insight into that. Here in this passage, he's sitting there with his disciples and he knows what's coming. He's prophesied to them what's coming. Uh, there, he's getting ready to leave. And he says, this is going to be the last time that I sit down together with you to do this. We're, we're going to back up a little bit. We're going to start with verse 26 of Matthew chapter 26. And he said, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink you all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. That story, that account, that event, reminds me of what it is, pictures what it is that we're dealing with right now. We are separated from people that we love. And Jesus loved his disciples. They loved him. 
You don't make the kind of sacrifices for each other that they did without love being the motivating factor. Jesus, in one sense, didn't want to leave. In another sense, he did because he was going home to his father and it was necessary for the spirit to be able to come. But he, he didn't want to leave them. And he, he, though he did in a physical sense, he didn't in a spiritual sense. Uh, he knew that they still needed him. And there was going to be a separation. There was going to be some pain. Some time that they were going to be apart from each other. And he said, we're going to celebrate this. They spoke there, there in Matthew 26. But we're not going to get to celebrate it again until. Until I come in my kingdom. One day, when Jesus does come in his kingdom, we're going to sit down together and we're going to partake of this ceremony once again that commemorates what it is that Jesus Christ did for us on the cross and as he rose from the grave. Jesus was anticipating that. And as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, whether it be um, virtually online or whether it be when we're able to get back together again, it, it commemorates, it celebrates the, the promise that God's kingdom both is here as well as the fact that it is coming. The next passage that we're going to take a look at is in John chapter 18. And it happened, though it's in a different book, it happened just a few hours after um, what Jesus did there with his disciples uh, there in the upper room. We're going to look at verses 33 to 36 of John chapter 18. You know what happened if you are uh, at all familiar with um, scripture and the story of uh, Jesus' death. You know what happened in between the time of Jesus uh, celebrating the Last Supper with his disciples and what we're getting ready to look, take a look at here is as Jesus was there uh, before Pilate. And uh, the disciples left the upper room, uh, Judas having already gone out and prepared to um, to betray Jesus Christ. Jesus gave further teaching to his disciples as they went out into the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus uh, there knelt in the Garden of Gethsemane three different times and encouraged his disciples to join him in prayer. And he prayed, Father, not my will, but thine be done. Even Jesus, even as it says in, Lord's, in, in the Lord's Prayer, which we're uh, taking a look at a part of tonight, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus was willing to submit to his Father's will because he knew that was necessary in order for us to be able to join him in the kingdom one day. And as he came back to the disciples, he found them sleeping. Uh, they were unprepared for what it was that was coming. The last time they woke up, uh, the guards along with Judas came and arrested Jesus. And that night, Jesus stood before several different groups of people um, accused before each one. The Sanhedrin, Herod, and Pilate. And in a couple of those cases, he went back and forth. The passage that we're going to look at here is when he stood before Pilate. Uh, John chapter 18, starting with verse 33. It says, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus, saying unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Jesus said it to Pilate on that day. I'm sure Pilate, being a political official, he was a little bit curious. The um, fact is that in this passage, it, it went back and forth, back and forth, and Pilate was getting a little bit nervous, a little bit scared. Because he thought, who is this guy that I've got in front of me? When he found out that Jesus actually claimed to be God, uh, he got really nervous at that point. Because if he was about to 
to get uh, God crucified, that is not great on your resume. That is not a great position to be in. And so he went back and forth with Jesus and he said, don't you understand that I have power to be able to crucify or release you? And Jesus said, you would have no power at all unless it were given to you by my father. Jesus basically said, yeah, my kingdom is future, but I'm in control. You know what was getting ready to happen to Jesus. He was getting ready to die on a cross. Let's do a little bit of logic here. Jesus is king, right? And if we're his children, what does that make us? Princes, citizens of the kingdom, princesses. I'm not a princess, <laughs> you know, I'm a guy, but oh well, you know, but some princesses here and everything, that brought a smile to my wife's face. That's basically why I said that. But anyway, how do you respond to a king that lets his children and lets the kingdom citizens suffer? Think about that for a second. Some would say, if Jesus really is in charge of the world and he's really king and we're citizens of the kingdom, why are we suffering? But think about it this way. Remember that first part of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, which art in heaven. Jesus is not just our king, but, the, but God, God the Father is our, is our Father. I want to ask you parents, you grandparents, a question. If you had the power to prevent your children from ever going through hardship, from ever suffering, would you? Yes. Would you prevent every single pain, every single suffering that they could ever have? I've heard different responses and everything, but let me put it to you this way. If you did... If you had the power to prevent your children from ever suffering, what kind of children would you grow? What would they grow up to be? They would never be able to handle life. They would never develop character. They would never learn compassion. They would never learn mercy. I know these are hard times, but I also know that God is in charge. And yes, he is allowing his children to suffer right along with everybody else. But that doesn't mean he's not in charge. That doesn't lessen his power. That doesn't lessen his love. It just means that God is going to use these things to grow us, to shape us, to mold us, and to use us as testimonies of his power and his grace and his goodness in the midst of the situations that we're facing, as well as the situations that our neighbors are facing, God is going to use this for good. He's in charge. He is kingdom. If God did not prevent his own son from suffering, what right have we got to expect that he will allow us to skate through life without going through difficulties as well? See, yes, we go through difficulties. Jesus didn't have to. But he went through pain. He became one of us. In order that one day, we would have an, an existence where there is no pain, where there is no suffering. That day is coming, but it's not here yet. We're going home one day. We're going home to be with him. I want to look at one more passage here tonight. And then we will close out our time as far as Bible study. But we'll take some time to be able to pray. By the way, if you've got any prayer requests, I meant to mention this earlier. So while I'm looking at this passage, we're going to be in Luke chapter 23. And we're going to look at verse 42. Um, but if uh, you have any prayer requests, go ahead and share those with us now. Um, if you're fine with everybody seeing your prayer requests, just do it in the comments section. 
If you uh, would like to keep it private, then just private message me and we can do that either way. And even if we do not mention your prayer request during our meeting here together tonight, be aware that um, I will go back through the comments and uh, we will, I will see that and pray over those uh, with you. Uh, do know that. But we're going to look at one more passage here together tonight, hopefully in the time frame before our Zoom uh, people have to leave us. Luke chapter 23, verse um, 42. Now, Jesus is on the cross when uh, these things are, uh, when these, these events are happening. You know that from the cross, uh, Jesus made multiple statements. Uh, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I uh, said to Mary and John, behold your son, behold your mother. Uh, several other statements. Well, one of them is here. Luke chapter 23, verse 42. And he, one of the thieves beside Jesus, said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. It amazes me, it shouldn't, but it amazes me as Jesus was on the cross that he was not just considering his own suffering, but he was constantly looking out to meet the needs of somebody else. We know there are people all around us that are being selfish during this time. Every time you go in the grocery store and you see empty shelves in certain categories, you know they're not just buying enough resources for them to be able to to do what they need to do for that week. You know that. They're hoarding those resources for, you know, whatever purposes. Um, but they're being selfish. Jesus, on the other hand, when he was going through a time that was so difficult, so painful, that they didn't have enough, even have a word to be able to describe the type of pain he was in, so they had to come up with a new word excruciating, crucifix. It's got the word cross right in there. They had to come up with a new word to describe the pain that Jesus was going through. And yet in the midst of his suffering, Jesus reached out to others multiple times. And he said to that man on the other side of the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There's coming a day when our suffering will end. And for all of you that have Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, rapture is coming. Maybe before our Zoom people have to leave us. Maybe before I'm on the, my way home tonight. Maybe it's five years out. Maybe it's ten years out. Maybe I, I don't know. But I know it's coming. And God's going to take us home. We're going to leave this planet behind. And God's kingdom will be a physical place on earth. And we'll be so thankful that we chose to suffer with him. He is worthy. He is glorious. And he is kind. Let's go ahead and pray together tonight as we draw this time together to a close. And uh, as I said, I will mention those prayer requests that I'm able to see. Um, I'll go back and pray over those that uh, I'm not able to see. And even if you don't share them during this time, feel free to private message me and, and I will be glad to, to join with you in praying over those things. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you tonight. We thank you so much that we can gather around your word. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, you know this is a time in which we're being tested. Life is difficult. Life is getting more difficult with each passing day. People are dying, Father. But you're the God that sees that. You're the God that knows what's going on better than any of us do. We thank you that you are in charge. We'd rather be in no other place. Thank you for that. Father, we do pray for these requests that have been able to see uh, I pray for this one uh, who is uh, graduating from the Air Force even this week, I think. And uh, I know that some wanted to be able to be there, but because of the restrictions, 
just aren't able to do so. I know that's frustrating. I know that's disappointing. Uh, but I pray, Father, for your strength and your encouragement and your your uh, ability during this time, Father. We pray for our medical people and as they seek to minister in different hospitals and doctor's offices and don't always have the resources that they need. We pray for our first responders, police and uh, those uh, that are dealing with fires and other emergencies and, and putting their lives in jeopardy every day. Um, for to be able to minister in just everyday situations that they face all the time, but, but even more so now with the struggles that they face. We thank you for their courage. We thank you, Father, that you have their back. Father, we do pray also for this one. I saw a dad that is going through some physical difficulties right now, if I read correctly, a mini stroke. I pray that you would give healing there, encouragement and strength. I pray, Father, that during these trying times that we re will reach out beyond ourselves and that we will find ways to serve other people and to love other people and to shine the light of Jesus Christ. Father, it's not time for us to be timid anymore and us sharing our faith with other, other people. It's time for us to be bold. It's time for us to shine the light of Jesus Christ with our actions, with our words, with every resource that we have in our uh, in our agenda, Father. Give us strength to live for you through all these times. Keep our faith strong. Uh, may our courage shine true. And I thank you, my God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you guys. We thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, we will do this again next week both through, through both platforms. And uh, if you want to go back, if you missed anything because you joined us late, uh, particularly on Facebook Live there, it'll be on our uh, page here shortly, I hope, <laughs> if I do everything correctly, which is a big F, if. Um, but uh, thank you for being with us. It's been good to see some faces here and some comments here. And we're so glad you joined us with us tonight. We're praying for you and we'll keep on praying for you. We love you, but more importantly, God loves you and he will see us through. Good night for, for now, and we will talk to all of you soon. See you guys.